from social science streams or those who came from international backgrounds uh, did not really have um, the opportunity to do a sustained in-depth kind of study of the language. Uh, so keeping this in mind, it was then agreed that uh, this scholarship would be spread over a period of three years. Um, the first year would be spent in India trying to, after we had made the selections, for, uh, trying to get as much of the language capability as possible. Uh, thereafter, they would move to the uh, to a university in China, which would be decided on the basis of the partnerships that the uh, Harvard Yenching Institute had with the different universities and uh, institutions. And depending on, of course, the scholars own area of expertise, the kind of um, interaction they wanted with scholars in China. So a very uh, varied uh, number of factors would uh, determine where the scholar would be located in uh, China for a period of a year or more, depending on the need for the language. Thereafter, they would shift to Harvard and there again have the opportunities to be mentored by the experts in the field to make um, their uh, presentations about their research to uh, basically hone their skills as researchers, um, understand uh, what are the kind of dynamics that are involved when you do research uh, and so on and so forth. Now, uh, the, this, this after, after we got into this agreement, thereafter we started the process and uh, 2014 is when uh, the scholars. So, so we, we really uh, fast tracked it and uh, Liz was excited and we were super excited. And so uh, between us, we pushed this process and uh, entered into this agreement, um, finished all the kind of uh, requirements. Uh, now, one of the uh, requirements, and I must flag it right here because uh, this did create some kind of uh, questions among a lot of people. Uh, the idea was that as we are, uh, moving to create this next generation, it should somehow work to uh, strengthening our own research base and our own scholarship. And so uh, the idea that these scholars would come back after their stints in uh, the university in China, in Harvard, come back, finish their PhD, submit it, and thereafter try and work in an Indian uh, university or an Indian institution where they can actually provide the benefits of their learning and their experience and their insights uh, to further strengthening uh, the China studies uh, programs in India. So we had a clause saying that for a period of time, the scholar should try and uh, give back, as it were, what they have received in ample measure over the last, uh, in the kind of support they receive over the last year. Uh, more importantly, they would also act as the ambassadors of this scholarship, um, popularize it, um, and increase the kind of uh, numbers uh, that they're uh, would be on on uh, on studying China, so this this was the understanding. This was the uh, work that we achieved, and then the first uh, cohort was uh, in twenty fourteen, and thereafter the story begins. Uh, so after that brief preparatory one year uh, kind of uh, beginning, uh, we start the fellowships in twenty fourteen. It has been a uh, um, uh, and, and a very interesting journey up till now. We have now a really a good cohort of scholars who have, uh, who have, and they, they're going to talk to about it. Uh, so I'm not going to take any more time, but to say that this truly is one of the most uh, wonderful examples of uh, cross country partnerships, uh, the United States, since uh, China, and in India. Uh, it has really opened up an enormous kind of uh, field um, and opportunities, and the scholars are going to tell you about it. So uh, let me then start the process by, um, so we, we, we propose to uh, do this uh, discussion in uh, three phases. The first was mine where I introduced the scholarship. Um, the second phase is when I'm gonna give a minute to each of the six people who have uh, who we have selected for uh, discussions in this, uh, in this uh, program. Uh, they will give them a speech to tell you, a, just give them, give a brief introduction to themselves. And then we go around again. And there are three issues that these 
uh, scholars will be uh, talking about in five minutes each. The first issue is going to be about how they came to know about the scholarship and um, ways in which they thought about uh, applying to the scholarship and uh, how they prepared themselves for this, how they um, uh, how, how they made themselves potentially suitable candidates for this. Uh, the second um, uh, point that I would like them to address is what was their experience when they came for the Viva, when they were interacting with the experts? Uh, what did they think? What did they feel? Um, was it a good experience, bad experience? Or what exactly uh, how they look upon that entire interaction? The final um, uh, issue that I would like uh, all of you scholars to address is how do you look at this period in terms of your evolution as a research scholar? Um, how do you think it has changed your understanding about what it means to do research on China? Um, how did it help you create your network? How did it help you to expand the range of the pool of experts uh, who have helped you further in this uh, in your research? Um, so these are the three points, and then we will um, have a Q and A um, with with as many people who want to join in. So uh, let me start with Nirmola, who's the uh, the senior most <laughs> of the of the ICSHYI. Yes, Nirmola, over, over to you. Um, thank you, ma'am. Uh, thank you for that lovely introduction of the fellowship. I hope everyone can hear me. Uh, am I? audible, visible I am. <laughs> okay, uh, so I am Nirmala Sharma. I have a PhD in Chinese studies and currently I am the China Studies Postdoctoral Fellow. And it's uh, awarded by Ashoka University and Harvard Yenching Institute. So this is the second fellowship I have received from Harvard Yenching Institute. And uh, right now I'm affiliated with Christ University, Department of uh, International Studies, Political Science and History. Uh, I welcome everyone to this panel discussion and thank you all. Okay, now one by one, just please keep taking it up. I'm not going to move yeah. in and say, no. yeah, maybe yes. Yeah, I'll introduce myself. So I'm Deem Subba and I'm a assistant professor at the Department of Political Science, Hyderabad University. And I'm the second cohort, I would say, after Nirmala. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so uh, my PhD is in in East Asian studies, but focusing on Chinese politics. Thank you. Get going, guys. Who's the number? Who's the next? Uh, thank you, Professor Alka Jaria, and thank you ICS for inviting me. Um, I really appreciate it. Well, I'm MD Yasin, pursuing my PhD at the Center for East Asian Studies, Jawaharlal Nehru University. Before that, I did my bachelor's and master's majoring in Chinese language, literature, and culture from the uh, Center for Chinese and Southeast Asian Studies, JNU. Language and Culture University uh, on scholarship jointly offered by MHRD, uh, Ministry of Human Resource Development, and China Scholarship Council. Then I came back to India and switched to the School of International Studies for pursuing my MPhil program. I was awarded ICS HYI Fellowship in 2018. So my fellowship team started with my affiliation in Central China Normal University, Wuhan, and later I joined Peking University in 2019. So this year I had to defer my fellowship team thanks to coronavirus. Uh, well, I'm currently here in Delhi and focused on writing my thesis chapter. And my PhD uh, topic is self-image and China's role in the UN Security Council and peacekeeping operations, 2002 to 18. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Next. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Nishit Kumar. And a very good afternoon to everyone. I'm currently a doctoral candidate at the Center for Chinese and Southeast Asian Studies at Jawaharlal Nehru University. My proposed PhD thesis is China and the Nobel Prize, Reception and Impact of the Literature Prize to Moyan. My, literature in, my research interests include contemporary Chinese literature, Chinese poetry or Chinese spoken drama, and the politics of art and literature. I received my undergraduate and master's in Chinese language from Jawaharlal Nehru University. And I also completed my MPhil from the same department at JNU. 
and my infill dissertation title is evolution of poetry in modern china a study of select works 1907 to 1949 and i am the fourth i am from the fourth cohort of ics hyi fellowship uh, i was awarded in 2018 thank you ah thanks uh, i think we have takofta also takofta so good afternoon everyone uh, i'm shagufta yasmin uh, i'm a doctoral candidate at the center for east asia am i audible yes 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 you are audible all right Uh, my doctoral research is on china's environmental diplomacy a study on bilateral relations between china india and china us from 1997 to 2019 and i am the fourth cohort of this fellowship and i received my fellowship in 2017 uh, that's it <laughs> Saloni Hello everybody good afternoon my name is Saloni Sharma and I'm a PhD student at Bitspilani Goa I received the ICS HYI fellowship in 2019 um my uh, I'm currently looking at China's um environmental governance through an ecosophical perspective Okay, so um, does that uh, complete our? Uh... Yes, ma'am. Okay, right. So let's begin round two. And uh, Nirmala, um, start off. How did you come to hear of it? How was your experience with the selection committee? And uh, how do you think ICSHYI has shaped you as a scholar, as a as a researcher, and uh, as uh, uh, how do you think it has it has changed you? Um, So I take all the questions together, ma'am. Yes, of course. Okay. okay. Five minutes, sir. Okay. Huh? okay, okay. I might get uh, lost track of the time, so please remind me. <laughs> Don't worry, <laughs> I'll do. I'll do knock knock. <laughs> okay, okay, <laughs> okay. So, uh, how did I? I'll begin with uh, something which I missed out when I was introducing myself. What What is the topic? What is the area I work on? I'm a historian of modern China, and. Uh, uh, so also there are not many people studying history in india unfortunately uh, which means uh, that uh, uh, you know the the work that i do is is niche uh, in the indian context now uh, it's, it's 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 a good thing that uh, new some uh, students like some uh, junior uh, friends are taking up the subject uh in in the uh, some of my friends are uh, studying in the uh, us and canada and researching in chinese history and they are from india so it's a good thing and i'm happy uh, uh, the positive outcome so i my my phd topic uh, focuses on the indian national army in china uh so which is which is a well, not many people are aware that the indian national army was quite active in china during the second world war and uh, except madhavi thampi and uh, also uh, i mean scant research here and there there has not been very deep uh, study of the of the topic of the subject uh, most of the indians uh, in china were in places like uh, shanghai and hong kong uh, guangzhou etc how did i after that let me take the question of how did i hear of the uh, of the fellowship uh, I see it as a very good job of advertising the fellowship. I mean, in the social media platform, Facebook, Twitter, on its website, also in EPW. So, I don't think knowing about the fellowship was a, was a, was an issue. It was widely circulated, and I came to know of it. I was in my first year. I've completed my first year of PhD, and I applied. Uh, the the application process itself was, uh, I would say, not. that uh, you know it was of course it was not easy but also because one has to talk about the topic that one was already working and that my uh, proposal was already passed in the department so it was already 
so I knew what I was working on. At least I had a scant idea of what I wanted to work on. So, uh, so I was called for the interview, of course. Veda was also there and so many other people. Veda was my cohort. Unfortunately, she could not make it to this, to this uh, panel. Uh, so when I went for the interview, I was quite nervous. Uh, the fact that many of my teachers were there in the interview board, uh, they didn't ask me any questions. They were just there observing, but it was, it was, it was, it was mind boggling in a way, just to see that they could ask, see if they could, they were there and they could, you know, whatever, whatever I was answering, <laughs> they were, they could, they, they were audience to it. It was, was I was, I was quite nervous, but uh, fortunately I got the fellowship and probably I would like to believe that the interview board uh, saw prospect, uh, a lot of prospect in what, uh, in my, in what I was doing. And then because I had some, I had some language training before that, uh, after uh, six months I went to, they sent me to uh, Shanghai because probably uh, I, uh, HYI and ICS thought that Shanghai would be a good place because I could do some field work there. Uh, archival research. So first year I spent in Fudan University. It's a prestigious university and I, I learned a lot there. So one of the problems that I faced initially and not, I wouldn't really say uh, it as a problem, but what everyone would face as a beginner probably was that when I went to attend actually class, history classes in Chinese, your Chinese, the teachers were instructing in Chinese. First few classes, I just could not understand anything. But slowly I got used to it and I could, uh, by the end of it, I, would, I could understand most of it. Like, uh, so that, that I, I see it as a, as a progression as a scholar, as, as, a, as, a, as a person who is doing Chinese studies and made uh, the uh, question of whether I made friends network, of course, made a lot of, met a lot of people, met a lot of scholars. I, I attended a few conferences when I was in Futan. I did my field work there, uh, substantial amount of field work there. Uh, and I met scholars from UK, also the uh, you know Chinese uh, scholars were working on the topic. Then I came to India and I, I went to Harvard at HYI. It was it was I was such a great experience being at Harvard and the intellectual environment there. You know the the rigor, the academic rigor of the place that one cannot be untouched by what is happening around us or. So my mentor was Arunab Ghoshin, uh, Dr. Arunab Ghoshin at Harvard. So I learned a lot from him. I still uh, interact with him and he has been a great mentor uh, today, until today. So it was, uh, I mean, so intellectually, the, the class, ma'am, how much time do I have? Ma'am, I can't hear you. Maybe you need to unmute yourself or what? Yeah, I said uh, you, you, I thought you were wrapping up. So just, yeah, say give yeah, your concluding so, thoughts. So uh, how did it help as a, me as, as see, well, the fact that I work in a, again, an area which not many people work on, it gave me a lot of uh, confidence as a scholar, as a young uh, sinologist in India. Also the, the fact that I was, I was researching in an area which is not so sought after in the context of Chinese studies in India. Uh, so the scholarship, the visibility, the exposure, the meeting with great minds in Hong Kong, uh, in, in, in Pudan and uh, Shanghai gave me a confidence. Of course, uh, when I came back today, I, there's a greater recognition of what I've done or what I'm doing and uh, people appreciate it. I hope, I believe, and uh, of course, uh, uh, yeah, it, 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 has a, it has a fundamental bearing on how I see myself as a scholar and how people perceive me as a scholar in, in China studies. With that, I'd like to come to an end. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. You, I gave you a, a little more minute uh, extra time because um, you're the first and you uh, need to <laughs> you know, be acknowledged as such. Beam, come on. Uh, thank you, uh, ma'am. And uh, thank you, Nirmal. Actually, uh, actually, oh, you spoke uh, like a couple of minutes more, but that made our job much easier. And we can actually really latch on what you just said. So yeah, with regard to this uh, fellowship, uh, 
in fact, I think I'll go from, I think from the present job that I'm doing and to the first what I did. And as I got my appointment here at Hyderabad University, although my supervisor, Professor Srimati and Professor Monti is here. And uh, so I was badgering them with a lot of recourse every time. <laughs> every scholarships that come around, whether it's re re related to China studies or language studies, um, I just, you know, was asking them recourse every time. Um, and they've been very helpful and really blessed me with uh, my request every time at uh, any, uh, you know, uh, moment that I used to shoot them emails. Uh, yeah, so uh, this teaching here at Hyderabad University, especially now I'm teaching comparative politics and I'm a student of Chinese politics, but my interest is comparative politics. And definitely that has really added a lot of, uh, you know, experience and also intellectual upbringing that I, you know, studied, uh, you know, in at Harvard, at, at Taiwan as well, and even in mainland China. But uh, coming back to this scholarship again, like uh, I'm the second cohort, and I remember when the first cohort interviews were happening. Even I sat for the interview then, and I remember my interview was late at the night, evening, late evening in China, and it was in Heilongjiang, and it was very, very cold. And uh, like, uh, as it was frigid there, my videos would fr froze and so many questions I could really skip out. But that time I was actually going, I was attending their, uh, you know, scholarship or uh, language training on the basis of Confucius scholarship. And it was a nine month old scholarship, you know, um, month scholarship. And although I was already registered as a PhD student in Delhi University, but Without the language, uh, you, you, we cannot really go forward. So that was the first time I, you know, my law extended long stay in China was. And that really helped me to really grasp up my uh, basic Chinese. And, and later on, when I came back on the next year, uh, in, uh, then stayed there in, in Delhi and was affiliated to ICS for some time and was doing my research. However, but uh, one year of Chinese wasn't enough. So, so, HYI really gave me that, uh, ICS HYI really gave me that push that, okay, if you pursue language, you have something very good here. So I couldn't miss the bus. And uh, so I don't, uh, so then, then I didn't apply for MHRD scholarship. So I just really wanted to, uh, you know, be in this one of the best scholarships in the, in the globe and around the globe. So that's what, and again, when I uh, got the scholarship, then I went to Taiwan then. So again, although uh, I wasn't receiving, uh, you know, ICSHY fellowship at Taiwan, but the Taiwanese, uh, uh, you know, institution at ICS was funding my, you know, stay in Taiwan. So that really helped me to really understand uh, Chinese politics. How is it being done in China, mainland China, and how is it being studied in Taiwan? So that gave me a really, as a student of comparative politics, looking into a, a particular variable, from mainland China and from Taiwan and, and, and from India and from Harvard, actually having, uh, you know, these four, uh, you know, territorial experiences, I would say it really was very enriching. And at Harvard, like, um, uh, I think today's the day that I really think about, uh, you know, Professor McFarker, he was my mentor there. Uh, 2019 was his last and uh, he, really, he was one who was always pushing me to really engage. And Professor, of course, Professor Perry was there, always there. And uh, so I used to, instead of writing my thesis there, so I used to attend classes, uh, Chinese politics classes at Harvard in the afternoon. And in the morning, I used to go and attend classes at uh, Boston University under Joseph Fiusman. So I, I audited his class in the morning and for two semesters, that was like one whole year. So I couldn't write much. So I, I think Professor, uh, you know, Srimati would bear me this out because only after coming to, back to India, I was actually writing my thesis. So that was the experience. And not only that, even at Harvard, you get to, within the HYA cohort, you have, uh, you know, scholars coming from China, Taiwan, Singapore, and other, you know, countries. And you, you have certain uh, group or, you know, st study group called Chinese Politics Workshop. 
So every week on Wednesday afternoons, we were engaged in those de deliberations, exchanging ideas with other students, not only from Harvard, also from BU, MIT, and other, you know. So still definitely at um, Harvard, Cambridge really gave you an opening to really engage with scholars of the rest. And also like it gave us a certain confidence that you can really, uh, you know, take your research to a certain level. And uh, yeah, I'm still like, I'm looking forward to, uh, sorry, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to really publishing my uh, PhD thesis, which is uh, I'm working on succession politics in China, the party in reform process. So I'm uh, looking forward to publish that as a monograph uh, in, I think uh, in next uh, like one, one or like one and a half years, like 18 months. So that's it. And uh, like, luckily just to wrap up before that, actually uh, my, uh, my interview board uh, was, pro uh, was uh, actually the director, the Professor Alka was there. And I, th I think uh, Professor uh, Partha Mukhopadhyay was there. And I think for the first time I, I was meeting him that day there. And I was really overwhelmed when he was badgering a lot of questions on contemporary Chinese politics. And of course, uh, Professor uh, uh, Prasenji Dwara and uh, Professor Perry were there. So it was indeed like overwhelming, daunting, but I enjoyed it and I was grilled. But at the same time, uh, at the end of the day, I was happy getting the scholarship. And that has really made my, you know, um, you know, like, uh, progression, especially with regard to like engaging with students here. And today I see a lot of younger students here when I discuss, when I teach them, they're interested in that. So definitely in the next coming years, they'll be one of the contenders definitely, I think out of like 50, 40. So they're the ones I'm really trying to nurture them to really apply and hope uh, to see them applying soon. Thank you, ma'am, for your time. I think I've exceeded, I think, one minute. Well, okay. Uh, thanks, thanks. You know, I think, um... You brought in a, a few other dimensions which are extremely useful. And uh, it's, you see, the, the thing is that if you are nimble footed and if you're looking out for opportunities, uh, both in China and in the US, it's, it's like everywhere. So you just have to have the, uh, the, the, the push uh, and, 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 well, the patience and the determination to work long hours uh, and you can really take a lot of uh, you know extract uh, immense benefits from this and so Bhim has really shown um, the, the way in which he cut across campuses and so on so that's another set of experiences that uh, the Harvard stint provided him with um, so thanks Bhim for your inputs I think we will have uh, what Yasin next Yeah. Okay, so I will talk more about the application process and, uh, and the, the nitty gritty of all this uh, involved in this process. So to the first question, how did I hear of the fellowship? I was quite familiar with the fellowship program because uh, most of the previous recipients are my seniors at JNU. And in fact, a promotional event by HYI was organized at JNU. I think that event perhaps was moderated by Professor Alka Acharya in 2007. Although I used to regularly check ICS website, but advertisement for the fellowship was actually forwarded by my supervisor at JNU. So I was awarded this fellowship in 2018. So I'm asked here to share my experience with the application process, right? So I believe this is common knowledge that for any fellowship, one crucial factor is to manage recommendation letters. Since all good and qualified professors are super busy with their commitments, one needs to start working in it, on it uh, in advance. Second factor, which is even more crucial, is statement of purpose. You have to go beyond your CV and make it look convincing that would serve the desired purpose of the funding institute. For this, uh, what I did was, apart from my credentials, I researched the websites of ICS and HYI to have an idea about what they're actually looking for. A statement of purpose should be fully representative of your past achievements and future goals and how it is going to be a kind of win-win situation for both you and the Institute. Also, uh, don't shy away from sh showing your potential. In my case, after I wrote the SOP, I discussed it with a friend 
who is a recipient of Erasmus Mandas Fellowship, and that worked perfectly fine to be called for the interview. And the next part is interview, which is, I think, uh, one of the coolest academic interactions I had so far. To be frank enough, uh, I was dead nervous, but it suddenly disappeared in the very first minute of the interview. Look, what I have experienced is there are professors and experts looking for the most suitable candidate. So please don't think you are surrounded by a bunch of FBI officers for interrogation. Try to make your mark and please, please don't pretend if you don't know because they know more than you, right? I think uh, during interview, you are probably not perceived to be an expert, but surely in the process of becoming one. And for that, you have to display your potential. And again, don't shy away from mentioning what you are good at. The third important thing is your PhD topic. When it comes to the selection of research area, uh, I would suggest you to take time and ponder over again and again, and if possible, go beyond the binary of friend and enemy, and for that matter, geopolitical arm twisting. Think about unexplored area in art, culture, heritage, civilizations, society, gender issues, women empowerment, or civil society for that matter. That can play a huge role in China studies in India, contributory to bilateral relations and world peace. And your contribution would be unique, impactful, and, and stunning. So these are the three things what I had actually worked on before applying this fellowship. And now today I am one of the panelists, which is indicative of the fact that my application process went perfectly well. So now I will quickly have a quick rundown about my journey as an international student from India to China, life in China, lessons and parts of studying abroad. And I would expect all of you to please take it as an experience sharing session. I spent the first year at Central China Normal University, where I had also opted for PhD coursework. So during this coursework, I have noticed the tendency of in inviting visiting professors there. Chinese universities, they invite uh, mainly Western and white professors for one or two week long lecture series, which is really beneficial to students. Such programs are very rare in uh, public universities in India, probably some private universities do. And during my stay in Wuhan, which is also central part of China, I have come across a local dialect, Wuhan Hua, Wuhan dialect, and noticed that uh, some people with strange complex feeling to speak Beijing centric standard Chinese, Beijing Hua, which is perhaps similar to the situation of Indian people not being fluent enough in English or unable to use the so-called elite accent. I found Chinese faculty and scholars were open for academic interactions, but the majority would avoid any discussions on the communist party or President Xi Jinping. And also in terms of students, I think Indian college goers and university students are mostly engaged in political talks, playing cards and cricket, but Chinese students mostly prefer fitness and involvement in many university clubs and voluntary groups. And another area for what I'm thankful to my professors and friends and also library staffs in China is learning ways to find materials online. They had been really nice and friendly. Moreover, I have explored some 10 provinces of China, including small towns and villages, participated uh, some traditional festivals, interactions with common Chinese, Lao Pai Xing during those occasions contributed immensely to my overall understanding about common Chinese and rural China. And lastly, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention my interactions with common Chinese people and overall life. They're friendly and nice, but I would also stress here that you must also pick the most popular Chinese language, Mandarin. Otherwise, you might feel belonging to one of, the, one of those helpless communities. With the skill of language, it becomes pretty easier to reach people and even the media. And also there is so much fun and freedom. Of course, here I mean social freedom in almost all over China. You have no problem with what you eat, where, or for that matter, how you live. The index of women's safety is also pretty decent. Accommodation for international students is much better than what we see in Indian public universities. You can make many friends, network with them, 
And finally, the stipend the HYI offers is handsome enough to live a good life without thinking about any financial constraints. And lastly, to talk about the impact of fellowship, I think it contributed immensely to add value to my research. I have been fortunate enough to, to be at Harvard this year, but I think uh, so far, uh, since I had employed content analysis, or to be more specific, coding as one of the research method, uh, research tools for my PhD, uh, and these Chinese materials, including paging, review, and people's daily of the last two decades are mainly in print form. So this fellowship facilitated me with the access of some print, print uh, versions of paging review, people's daily and Chinese white papers, Chinese government work reports and its position papers. So with this, my conclusion is that the fellowship has catalyzed my understanding, helped me unlearn so many uh, misconceptions about China and also been instrumental for a better PhD thesis. Thank you. Great, yeah, Shane. I think uh, all those uh, among the audience who are uh, probably at the stage when they are wondering how to get some good scholarship to go to China, you have provided a very nice nuts and bolts, feel of the ground kind of a way that you went across uh, uh, your entire experience. And uh, yeah, I think uh, the way in which you have uh, uh, given us a feel of what you really got out of it has been has been very uh, very nice. In fact, it gives us a sense of uh, uh, satisfaction that uh, part of the objectives uh, that we have with this scholarship you have amply uh, reflected uh, an achievement in that direction. So thanks, uh, Yasin. Now um, Nishit is uh, next. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, so I will just go through all the questions. So I came to know about the fellowship, uh, as Yasin mentioned that uh, quite our seniors got this fellowship. So I got to know about it from my own university and seniors. I got this fellowship in 2018 and I and Yasin was the fifth cohort of this fellowship. About my experience, uh, about the application process, uh, in my view, it was very smooth because the time period allotted for this fellowship from the advertisement to the deadline was the quite long, like two months. So you have quite ample amount of time to apply to make your research proposal, your PhD synopsis, get your recommendation letters, everything. About the interview, uh, when I entered in the, into the interview room, I was quite nervous because I saw like 10 interviewers in front of me and everyone was like renowned a scholar of India China studies in India. However, interviewers were quite friendly and it helped me like, why should we go to an interview? It is not always like winning and losing process that you get the fellowship. But the interview process helped me to also strengthen my PhD synopsis. However, it was already passed, but I got quite uh, new inputs. In fact, with the, inside the interview, Professor Arunav recommended some books and uh, some questions were asked from my MPhil thesis. So that also shaped a new direction for my MPhil research work. And about my experience of attending a university in China, uh, it helped me like uh, a very good field work. I interviewed uh, Nobel laureate Moyan on whom I am working. I, uh, my mentor was Professor Chang Yu at Peking University. And uh, here I would like to mention one very good thing about the fellowship that one has a flexibility to choose university and mentor. Like uh, I chose Peking University, someone chose Futa University, my own classmate Shanky, he chose uh, Peking Normal University. Tia was uh, one uh, sen in senior cohort. She chose to spend six months in Shanghai and six months in Peking University. And before that, she was uh, strengthening her language ability at CCNU. And uh, <clears throat> during my uh, China stay, it was uh, one get a lot of opportunities to access library, like I access National Library of China. Then I also access archives of Moyan at Kaomi. So in fact, HYI is very helpful in uh, allowing fundings 
so uh, through hoi we also attended uh, new york university at shanghai there was a workshop by professor tansen on india china methods and uh, then i also attended uh, sco at kunming so and also yanqing global symposium so these uh, these experiences not only help uh, to like attending and uh, presenting your paper or something but this also strengthen your research work because all these professors ask you questions and give their inputs and about researching in india and china there are very less amount of books or materials available in indian libraries or if one want to order then it is quite expensive so when i went to china so i collected a lot of books especially from the literature so no one is selling chinese uh, moyan's book in chinese in india even if you go to amazon you will find that these books are not available and only translated books so first hand research materials one can collect by getting this fellowship and staying in china about life experience at harvard in general or hyi in specific hyi hyi is quite helpful in everything they also have uh, like hyi workshop on india china studies so one can present their views and get views from the audience and audience are also hyi fellows and scholars so fellows are phd students but scholars are they are professors so and from each and every field like from media studies from literature background or political background from environment background so discussions help me to uh, put my thesis into a shape and also hyi library is like the biggest library in the world on china so there are a lot of materials which i was not be able to access in china that those were available in hyi library and my professor david wong my mentor professor david wong at uh, hyi was like is the quite renowned scholar on chinese literature so interaction with him give new angles and dimensions for my phd thesis like i was not uh, my thesis is on china and nobel prize reception and impact of literature nobel to moya so i started from literature nobel but he asked me to go through all the literary prizes which are in china why exactly this literature award is so much of concern in china from a state perspective or from writers perspective and uh, so i would say that this and about making friends so hoi staffs like francesca and uh, james or dr liro hong susan these are the staff at hyi and they are very helpful they helps in everything and uh, apart from ics hyi fellowship which everyone gets every month there are lot of other uh, stipends which one can apply like uh, for attending a uh, conference to present paper within us and canada so one can apply for two twice and also if you have some field work or going to other university to get an interview so one can apply for that also so these are added advantages but uh, once you reach there then you will get to know about it and uh, about the impact of fellowship in my professional career i would say that uh, this is the best in one nutshell so and about uh, evolution and development i would say in research the more you tell about your topic to more people you will get to know more angle and dimensions and this fellowship put you into a such a good uh, group of people from your mentor to other scholars so you get a full range of people from diverse topic so i would say that uh, whatever is going to be outcome i i am about to submit my thesis in next 5 to 6 months and i am able to write this thesis only because of this fellowship thank you so much okay great nishit that was uh, 
that that was yet another dimension that you were bringing in here, particularly because you were dealing uh, with a topic that uh, goes to the heart in many ways of the politics between uh, China and the West about uh, the, the the Nobel uh, Prize. So um, so yes. Uh, the more I'm hearing you people, the more uh, affirmed I am feeling and the more uh, uh, confident the Institute is about uh, how this scholarship is really going to be a turning point in the lives of the individuals and through you, hopefully, um, like Bhim today is teaching and he he now is recognizing his responsibilities as a teacher in a very different sense. Uh, uh, and I think the China and the Harvard extents have, have gone to shaping uh, the way in which he's seeing uh, what he will do as a teacher, similarly Nirmola, you know, so, so all of you uh, eventually who will be part either of the teaching profession, um, what you were saying is, uh, is, is very affirming, as I said. So we'll have Saloni next. Hello, everybody. So I haven't been to China or the US yet. Um, how I can contribute is by sharing my experience of the applic application process. Um, and um, so I heard about the fellowship in the All India Conference of Chinese Studies uh, that was held in 2018. Um, and and I remember um, Dr. Beam and Dr. Dr. Veda were sharing their experiences and I was fascinated. However, it wasn't then that I had decided that I would apply eventually. It, uh, I, I was pursuing my uh, postgraduate diploma in liberal studies from Ashoka University at the time of application. And I was conflicted about whether I should pursue a second master's or I should just apply for a PhD. Um, I knew about the fellowship uh, uh, because a lot of our seniors have been recipients of uh, this fellowship, but I also knew that you have to be in a PhD program uh, to get the fellowship. However, when you when I read the ICS website um, in the eligibility criteria, there was one sentence that said that um, those who are still applying for PhD can also apply for the fellowship. So the, uh, the fellowship would be contingent on your admission to a PhD program. And I thought, okay, um, why not just go ahead and uh, apply? Um, and I, I remember there were only 10 days left uh, to the deadline. And, um, and I, um, I, I went to JNU to meet my, to meet one of my teachers. And I said that I'm thinking of applying. My intention of course was to get a recommendation letter. And my teacher said that, oh no, preference is given to those who are already in PhD and whose synopsis has been passed. So I couldn't even muster the courage to ask for the uh, recommendation letter. So I applied with two recommendation letters. Uh, there are three that are required because I couldn't get the third one. And, um, and yeah, uh, I spoke to uh, one of my mentors who is closely associated with ICS. And I said that uh, I'm thinking of applying uh, to this fellowship. And he said that take it as a practice. Certainly you won't get through because it is for uh, more senior scholars. And, uh, and so because I was hearing these things, I was instilled with a passive confidence. So when I went for the interview, I just took it as a preparation because um, I thought that, okay, eventually maybe next year or the year after I would be facing this. So, so let's just get to know how it's like. And um, I remember uh, my seniors were there and everybody was scrolling through their synopsis and I was relaxed. And I think that really, <laughs> that really made a difference. And when I walked into the interview room, I saw there was so many, uh, I, I couldn't count then, <laughs> but I think there were nine or 10 panelists. And 
and to be honest i had a blast at the interview because it was so friendly and so nice and i got um i got feedback about what i want to do and i think here i would just stop and say that um i think um when you're choosing your topic that that really makes a difference because for me i know that um i am very passionate about my topic that is uh, ecological civilization and environmental governance so i think the panelists they can see through if you're genuinely passionate about your topic if you really feel that okay i want to work on this problem and uh, perhaps uh, you know this is it uh, if you can go on and say a monologue uh, on that topic for 5 minutes then then i think that really uh, matters that really makes a difference uh, in your uh, candidature uh, in your even um, you need to show that you are really committed to that topic to that problem um and i think that's what made a difference uh i may be wrong um but uh, that's my humble understanding and okay. yes uh i and to my surprise i was selected so later the struggle was to get through a phd program uh yeah so that's the okay my- thanks uh, thanks indeed saloni that was that was really uh, uh that, that was very heartwarming uh, because uh Uh, one thing that you have brought out very clearly and which i hope uh, all those uh, among the audience who are thinking about this uh, or who want to spread the word around um, should know that uh, when you hear of a good thing uh, don't hesitate too much i mean you know this this is a good scholarship it comes to you and uh, just call up the people in the institute uh, and speak to them Uh, remember that um, what saloni said just now is 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 spot on that we are here to just spot the genuine passionate research scholars it doesn't matter whether you are um, you know enough about that subject that you're going to be grilled at the interview or that you um, your your information may be slightly off the mark those things don't matter the ultimately the question is uh how serious and how committed and how passionate you are about what you are doing uh and if that commitment and passion is there just approach anybody in the institute directly we we would be very happy to clarify any kinds of doubts or any kinds of clarifications and uh, uh provide all sorts of information uh, don't hesitate don't hesitate uh, if uh, uh, you think you are the scholar we need Okay, um, Shagufta, come yes, in and ma'am. say. Yes, ma'am. All right. Mm-hmm. First of all, I would like to con. What happened? Is she muted? We can't hear her. Shagufta, we can't hear you. I'm so sorry. I, yeah. The connection went wrong. So first of all, I would like to congratulate ICS. Uh, you know the way this whole fellowship is progressing. I I mean, like when I I remember when I you know applied for this interview, uh, I could hear you know Professor Alka. I'm also saying that you know we need to let people more and more people come for this interview. We we want to have you know larger ap- number of applicants. And now when you can see you know even in this Zoom meeting there are hundred. more than 100 of people who have joined like i'm i'm sure there are so many people who are aspiring to apply for this fellowship and for me i know nowadays you know people get to know about this fellowship from like facebook and so many platforms but how i came to know what is really old school because i went to icwa for the first uh, india china think tanks forum and there they were you know there were pamphlets that were placed outside and i just picked it up and uh, since i have my mphil you know on china's environmental diplomacy and i was trying to you know f- focus on the same topic but on a different dimension for my phd so i was actually thinking that how am i going to make my phd different so when i got to see about this fellowship you know that that just clicked okay i think maybe this is the platform which is going to help me you know to you know improvise my research in such a way where i'll feel okay this is my doctoral thesis and i really worked on it so and uh, i think this is the platform where i would really like to congratulate 
alka ma'am personally because i remember the way i have really you know bothered you through emails for every single thing my personal things my professional and you know academic things writing emails day and night because we were the first cohort to go to ccnu in wuhan and uh, like we we were not getting our fellowship on time so i just wrote an email and alka ma'am would just you know try to do whatever she can from here so ma'am thank you so much i know that that time i was quite annoying i do accept the fact <laughs> that i have really but and this is how you know this fellowship works everybody who is aspiring to go on this fellowship i must say you have a backup from the people here at ics and at hyi no matter what kind of issues you face you know these are the people who are going to just sort it out on all platforms even if it's your personal problem or academic or your stay or anything and uh, i why i consider this as one of the big i don't know in future what other academic achievement i'm going to make but i consider this as one of the most important academic achievement that i have one because i got the opportunity to do research in two most you know prestigious universities of the world beijing university and the harvard university and uh, in peijing university i worked under the person whom i have been studying for my fellow like research for so long professor chang hai pin and it was made possible just because you know i see of this fellowship and working under him really helped me you know understanding about china's environmental diplomacy through a chinese perspective no matter i know the language because i have my undergrad and masters in chinese language i read the text but you know discussing this topic with him sitting in his room and discussing my research with him really helped me and gave me that confidence that okay like now this is how i am going to you know progress my research on and then my again stay at harvard undoubtedly listening to just knowing about harvard everybody must be thinking oh it's going it must have been the best experience of course it was the best experience i had access to you know i i would say like every single resource that i wanted to access no matter even if it was not available in the library the interlibrary loan provision of the harvard university libraries they would you know just uh, contact the other libraries and get the material from there and gave it to me so overall if you are you know a researcher and you really want to you know work on your research for your doctoral thing i think this is the platform and no matter how much you have to work hard to apply for this fellowship write a good sop and prepare a good research statement i think this is the platform where you will get all kinds of encouragement and you know motivation to develop as a young sinologist and i'll come and personally i would again thank you for you know enduring with all the things that i have done <laughs> during this fellowship period <laughs> and you have really been a wonderful you know mentor i must say for me okay okay thank you you don't have to do this uh, but uh, as i said that uh, the hyi ics hyi uh, fellowship is is a very very important uh, uh, important uh, program um, that the institute has taken up and listening to you all i i really wish we could have had more of uh, uh, the fellows out here but time is limited uh, but listening to you all um, is once again uh, making us all feel and i am sure i speak on behalf of all my colleagues at the ics all those people who really agonized over how to formulate this how to what kind of uh, an agreement should be drawn up um but one thing we knew that this opportunity of starting from here having this stint in china going on to harvard was like a Uh, an optimum combination of uh, of uh, the best of all the three worlds so um, so yes it's uh, it's been great listening to you all and i think we can now um, allow the many participants who are sitting and listening and as i said i hope there are some young hopefuls there um, who would like to raise questions please ma'am ma'am can i intervene in between we have an audio visual uh, to show before the q and a oh you want to show yes. it right now okay So Or, while the uh, yeah huh? probably probably now so that we don't yeah It's just three minutes okay. three odd minutes so okay, okay so our um, our fellows have um, 
ICSHYI fellows have made a little audio clip. Ad on, on Advitya, Advitya, could you please uh, show the audio visual? Thank you. Advitya? Yeah, just give me one, yeah, one sure, second. Sure, Sorry. Sure. The suspense is killing. Huh? It's going to better be a good thing. <laughs> Somehow it's, it's not showing in my screen. Oh, dear. Can we start the uh, Q&A and uh, as it comes on, we'll just let, uh, we'll interrupt the conversation and... Yes, uh, ma'am, I think that's a good idea. We yes, yeah. can do it in the end. Yes, yes. No, you, you in between. Yeah. In, in between. between. Whenever, uh, whenever you are able to, whenever you are able to run it, Aditya, just put it on. Okay. Yes. Just interrupt the the conversation. Yes, okay. So, um, yeah. So now um, yeah. the floor is open. Anybody who wishes to ask uh, anything or uh, yeah. say something, uh, welcome. Yes, uh, nobody has anything. Everybody is just feeling the sense of overwhelmingness. Huh? <laughs> nobody has any questions. I think you people made your presentations in such a comprehensive manner. Everybody is probably rushed back and decided to start, straight away go and start applying for the scholarship. <laughs> Since nobody is asking question, can I ask a question to be <laughs> through? Like yes, those? yes, please. Uh, it's, uh, floor is open for everybody. Okay, thanks. So uh, I'm just curious to know, how do you uh, select or choose a mentor at Harvard? Do you have any say on the ICSA? HYI would give you one. Yeah, uh, if I can, yeah. So usually when you're here in India, and uh, since I was in Taiwan then, so before you process your visa and application process uh, for, you know, formal application process to Harvard. So I will usually ask you that, are you in, you know, what are your options? Are you willing to uh, look for your mentors by yourself or are you gonna, you know, and you can ask for the suggestions to the HYI institutes because uh, they have your interest and they have your synopsis and all. So uh, in my case, I actually thought of, uh, I was exploring them. So when I was at Taiwan only, be, and before I came to India and applied my uh, visa for, for uh, you know, I started my application process. So, uh, but uh, since I had two mentors, then I, you know, then I started, okay, thinking that I should attend classes. And uh, by then, uh, Professor Roderick McFarker had already stopped teaching. Uh, he was teaching at Harvard until 2012. And then he was affiliated to Fairbank most of the time. So I was to go and attend Fairbank, uh, you know, uh, center lectures and uh, so was interacting personally with Professor McFarker. But you can also have a co-mentor there. It's not that only you have to stick to what uh, HYI suggests. You have an, you know, they, they're always uh, happy to, and it's better you start writing to them. Mm. Exactly. Um, I was about to come to that, that, you know, the good thing about a university system is that, you know, there is a considerable amount of leeway you have in uh, mm. identifying people whom you would like to interact with or uh, have as a mentor, um, have more than one. And uh, the important thing is what we mentioned right now, um, that you have to start a conversation in advance. You have to get in touch with the people and uh, all the institutions, ICS and HYI uh, in Harvard and the Chinese universities, uh, whichever you're going to, will help you identify and get in touch with the right person. 
So before you have landed there, you are already engaged in some kind of uh, exchange uh, by email. Uh, and so they, they, they have a certain kind of familiarity with who you are. You don't just suddenly drop onto them uh, one fine day. So that's, that's really a very, very flexible and a very uh, a, a process which is entirely to help the student get in touch with the best. Uh, Mirza is uh, here with uh, 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 an intervention. Mirza, yeah. come on, please. Um, thanks, ma'am. Uh, I wanted to ask uh, any of the fellows that are present here, um, because there are a lot of young students who are watching this and want maybe to apply for this and may want to prepare in advance. And something that we always struggle with is to know about more about Chinese language courses in India. Uh, if there could be some information on that, uh, where we can actually get, and what is the basic uh, entry level of Chinese language that is required for applying for this fellowship? Again, if so people want to prepare for that earlier, that will be helpful. Well, any one of you can take it. Who would like to take it? I just like to begin by saying that, you know, this is something that I think there are, uh, there is a fair amount of confusion also, because what exactly is the capability you need to apply um, or what is it that you need to do? Uh, maybe we should have some kind of um, uh, 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 information on this, uh, which is added to on the website or something, or have some uh, contact person who can address this if somebody is interested. But... Any of you would like to address uh, Mirza's uh, question? If I can? Yes, please, Beam, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, with regard to the centers in the North, especially because since uh, Cotton College is one of the Cotton co co University, I think college is one of the uh, co-sponsor of the event here. Yeah. So I don't know how many like uh, centers are there or if there are any uh, Chinese language centers there. But however, like if, if I'm right, my conversations with Veda, Dr. Veda, and uh, she actually uh, did pass, I think, uh, uh, the basic, I think, uh, if I'm not wrong, uh, Nirmala can weigh on this. Uh, the la la I've stepped out. Stepped yeah. out for a moment. What was the question? Sorry, I missed it. Yeah, it was with the level of the language, you know, capability, how much should be, you know, the minimum for, you know, uh, qualification. Okay. I think it's HSK level three, because I had to write a test. Uh, and then when I cleared the test, uh, then I was, uh, you know, then I could go to Futan. Uh, similarly, Veda also had to learn uh, the language for a year. So even though we got the fellowship at the same time, she left uh, for uh, China one year after I went. So because one year she took to learn the language and then she also had to clear a test. It's not a difficult test. It's just to gauge uh, the level of uh, you know, familiarity with the language and whether they can read some easy text or not. Okay, uh, I think we have the video um, audiovisual ready. So let's have roll that in and then we'll see there are a couple of more interventions which we can take on.
Oh yeah. What do you do about nostalgia? <laughs> you look at all this. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so that was really good. Um, I mean, just the sheer sense of uh, the breadth of the places that you go and the range of experiences that you get. Uh, these are enormous. I think uh, the last one where you were with some, which had people sitting on huge pumpkins. It was a visit to a apple orchard. Um, so there is one question here, which is talking also about how it's not just about your profession and your research and your scholarship, but also uh, your personal lives are touched by all these experiences. So you know everything goes to, to to turning your 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 mind around and making you different people. Okay, uh, so this question that is there, which is that. Um, if I'm hearing about this scholarship today, says Rahul, uh, tell me how can we go through from here to there? Of course, basic language, uh, need tips. You've already spoken about the language. Um, so anybody wants to see how to go from there to here? I think we have already taken out the advertisement and there is little time frame window that there is for applications. So yeah, any of you to want to take this on? I just want to uh, say something because since Rahul and me are in constant uh, discussion okay. here, so working yeah. on Chinese politics. Yes. Uh, so uh, I think he, uh, firstly, like he has to be, I mean, how is he doing with his language? I would say uh, the language is the most important uh, vehicle that can really lead us from here to there. And uh, there's no shortcut. And Yes, definitely. And diligence, dedication, passionate, and uh, and the you know and how you know uh, disciplined you are with your uh, research, and also uh, what area that you are doing on, and it would be uh, as we know that HYI usually uh, really looks into not into policy studies and per se. So it's rather focus on intellectual building and academic perspective of, of any area that one has to really look into doing research. So I think uh, it is more of an evolutionary process. Rather, there's no one uh, response to that, if I can. And uh, and uh, there are some. I think this year there are quite a few students who have already written to me, and I think they are some of the ones who have I think applying this year. Uh, so yeah, they, they, they have the same questions as what Rahul just asked. So I had to have a, a Google Meet sessions with them. Uh, you know, what mm -hmm. are the SOPs are, you know, the, uh, their proposals, discussions and all, they have to really work on that, I think. And uh, if, that, I think that's the... Uh, yeah, you, you're right. And see, in one sense, which I, uh, which I, I mentioned earlier, and I, I, if any of my colleagues uh, from the Institute would like to come in here, please do come in uh, because uh, um, we've all been part of this story as it were. But one thing is there, look, today there are so many avenues on which you can get started. Okay, Online, uh, you can go, there are lessons galore, there is DHKS. I would say that first do a little bit of digging on the net. I mean, oh, you all are now net heavy, uh, whoever, uh, I mean, I'm talking of those who are thinking in terms of applying, um, figure out what are the kind of options and then just get in touch with any of us and talk to us that, look, these are the options, which one should I take? Because uh, it's no longer something like only, which was, which was the case say 10 years or 15 years earlier that you could only do it in specific places. Uh, so um, both formal institutionally, you can get this training and through online programs and through registering uh, online. Uh, there are some uh, programs which are also free instruction is available on the net. So, um, so I think do a little bit of digging and uh, get in touch with any of us and uh, the, as Beam said, that at the end of the day, the language is what is going to make or mar you as a scholar. So let's take this as, you know, the, the, the absolute sine qua non. But um, I was hoping some of my colleagues from the Institute uh, would come in uh, and say, um, contribute. I mean, I would particularly welcome Professor Mohanty um, to 
to, to put his own <laughs> print on this discussion as well. Manu, you are there, I know. Or you were there. I don't see him, ma'am. Has he left? Probably. Okay, maybe he signed off. Yes. So, okay. Uh, so, any more questions? We've got about uh, five, seven minutes more for um, for discussion. I think there aren't any more questions. So, among the 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 our presenters today, our, our speakers today, if anybody wants to come in again on with something else, uh, which they might want to add outside the format that we had. Uh, one thing I would like to say is like, for choosing the mentors at HYI, one thing which is very, you know, unique about this thing is like, when you reach there and you have the access to the uh, Harvard email, when you get your Harvard email ID, after that you can access the course structures of the different professors who are providing the you know different courses. So in that case, you can go and see you know through uh, in different centers. If you find any of these courses relevant to your research, you can access to like write an email or just go and meet the professor or write an email and ask like if I can come and attend your class. And I think most of the professors, they welcome you to, you know, sit and and in that way you you learn a lot, even if you get a chance to just sit in their class, not, you know, present, make a presentation or something. But still, I think that is a good thing, which is very unique about this fellowship. Like you can ask no matter which mentor you get or from which center you are affiliated to. It's like you get access to all the centers and everywhere, wherever you want to go and sit. Exactly. I, I think that's uh, that's that's really one of the plus points uh, of the university system. Uh, Madhavi is uh, okay. I'm so glad you're coming in, Madhavi. You uh, will you please uh, speak, Madhavi? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> no, I don't know what if whether what I'm going to say is uh, you know completely out of line of what everyone is saying. But I think the real opportunity this fellowship gives you is to make that transition from being a student to one of a group of professionals uh, in the, on a global scale. I mean, I, I don't know if you, that makes sense, but the problem with a lot of our, us, our students is that lifelong, we think of ourselves as students of a particular teacher. And we're always junior <laughs> to somebody. And it's not easy to go from that to being a professional yourself. How do you make that leap? And as long as we sit here in our own institution with our own teacher, I think sometimes we never grow up. Um, and this H ICS HYI fellowship, by sending you to all these places, uh, sort of forces you to grow up. And um, uh, so, you know, somebody asked, how do you go from here to there? Okay. So I think uh, one thing which you really have to do is to, uh, you know, look at these places that you're going to, like whether it's one of the universities in China or the, or the HYI itself, look at what people are doing there. Uh, you know, what has their work been? Is there some fit between what you are doing, what they are doing? Um, and what questions would you like to ask them? So don't wait till you go there and you land there and you're suddenly face to face with somebody. And, you know, I think Alka had said, you know, start the conversation earlier. Uh, so that's sometimes very hard. How do you write to Professor so-and-so in such and such a place, Peta or, you know, but you have to start doing that. You have to start thinking of yourself as that person's colleague in the future <laughs> and um, getting there. And you start writing to them, you know, and say, look, I'm interested in what you're doing. I have found, you know, that generally uh, academics abroad write back to you, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, very often. I mean, you'd be surprised <laughs> how a senior person can write to I mean, don't write to them saying, no, will you give me money to <laughs> study here or, you know, do like that. But 
start a conversation about their work, your work, and you know, that interests people. That not only makes it easier for you once you go there, if someone already is interested in you, but I think it also, the process of starts right here. So don't just think of writing your, getting your recommendation letter and writing. I mean, you should write your SOP and all that. I'm not saying you shouldn't, but uh, don't think of it as a little homework assignment, which if you push through and somehow you get through, uh, it's all right. You know, just think that you are starting to develop as a professional and you have to find ways of talking to people senior to you. Okay, so I think I'll stop there <laughs> because this is what I want to say. Perfect, perfect, uh, Madhuri. In fact, uh, when I was my initial round, I, I said, you know, in the end, I would like you all to address this issue that how has this changed you? How has this transformed you uh, as a scholar, as, uh, as as somebody who is now going to be contributing to the field? Uh, so somewhere I wanted, uh, I wanted a sense of this, precisely this transition that you have raised, uh, Madhuri. This is absolutely brilliant that you move from, in, in a way, when you are going from, from, from here, uh, in India to China to Harvard, you are actually navigating not just spaces, but you are navigating professional uh, 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 professional development. And the, by the time you come here, of course, you have to write out your PhD and submit it and do the usual thing. But you should have had a sense of the kind of range uh, that there is and where exactly you would like to locate yourself in that. So somewhere this uh, fellowship is not just about uh, getting an opportunity to go and collect material from China and, and uh, the US and submit your, uh, you know, now with online things, maybe you are able to access these libraries from here only. So the whole point about going to these places is that you, uh, you, you get a sense of your location in this larger field and how exactly it is that you will be emerging as, as a scholar in your own right. So this HYI, ICS HYI scholarship um, is, is precisely about that, you know, bringing you to, to this point. Um, so thank you all very much. I think this has been a great uh, round and, uh, of discussions. Maybe a couple of more discussions about this nitty gritty. How do we go from here? Uh, what do we do? Uh, I think uh, let me have a talk with uh, some of you, um, some of the fellows uh, from this scholarship and see how we can, because this, this uh, basic thing about languages, I, I find a problem uh, that most people are facing. So maybe we should do something about clarifying that aspect. And um, and hopefully, yes, uh, the tribe will expand and grow. So looking forward to that, that expansion and uh, eventual contribution to China studies in India. Thank you. Nirmala, I think you have okay. uh, some concluding thoughts in the matter. Yeah, uh, okay. My own concluding thoughts on the scholarship is, I, I think I said that it gave me a lot of confidence, but it is, I think, one of those unique scholarships not available to Indian students in India, per se. Uh, probably if you go on a Commonwealth scholarship. Uh, so it's unique and uh, also in synology. Uh, it's it's uh, uh, the tribe, as you say, the tribe is small. Uh, and this scholarship uh, coming from Harvard is, is uh, is also probably shows the amount of confidence uh, they have uh, in the younger scholars uh, that they are willing to go the extra mile and fund two three scholarship uh, fellowship every year uh, to outstanding students or fellows. So I think all the younger uh, uh, you know research students who are at different universities and who are probably attending at this point. This, this discussion, I, I highly encourage them to apply and uh, good things have come out of it for us. Great things actually. Bhim is in Hyderabad, uh, Madhurendra Jha, who could not really join, unfortunately. Uh, he teaches in uh, Dune University. Recently he has uh, translated uh, in Urdu, uh, from Urdu to Chinese. Uh, oh, I forget the name of this. Ek Chadar Mehlisi. Uh, I myself is in uh, Christ University. So uh, the first cohort, Veda, I mean, oh, we all are trying to contribute or do the best we can uh, with, the, with 
uh, with our, our training in, in India, US, and China. And uh, it's, it's a continuous process, as Ma'am uh, Gaman pointed out, that it's this continuous process of honing our skill. As we hone our skills, we will contribute and we hope to contribute to China studies in India and hopefully take it uh, one notch higher than it is at this point. <laughs> uh, thank you all. With this, I'd like to, Ma'am, should I give the thank you note also? Please do, please do. You are okay. the <laughs> ideal person to do this. <laughs> Okay, I, I'd like to, uh, at the end, I'd like to thank uh, our co-organizers. I have written it down so that I don't forget. Uh, Department of International Studies, Political Science and History, Christ Deemed to be University. Department of Political Science, Cotton University, Guwahati. I'll come on for being such a great moderator and for <laughs> being such a great teacher uh, for all these years and, uh, and mentor. Uh, ICS staff, especially Advitya, Samanvya, and Rija. Uh, Ad Advitya, she has done a lot of work. So, so thank you, Advitya. And, and the audience, I see a lot of students going by reading the surnames from uh, Sam. So, so hopefully all the students will apply and you will be, uh, China studies is amazing. So I will encourage you to apply and probably take up China, uh, research in Chinese studies is enriching <laughs> and fulfilling and yeah uh, thank you audience thank you ICS and thank you HII for such a great uh, you know sponsor and patron to us uh, the small tribe <laughs> thank you all <laughs> no, indeed, indeed indeed the uh, Harvard Yenching Institute must be given a special word of thanks um, they saw the potential in uh, the ICS and therefore decided to partner with us. And uh, I think in many ways, uh, the kind of resources that they were able to bring, uh, we could never have done it on our own. Uh, resources, both in terms of material resources, as well as uh, collaborative uh, resources across China. Uh, so, um, so indeed, the HYI has been truly a major, major contributor. Uh, to expanding the scope of uh, our scholars who can have access to this wider uh, area of uh, investigation, research, um, and, and ability to interact with mentors. So yes, uh, I do, uh, do would like to conclude by thanking HYI and of course, uh, the institutions in China, which have also yeah. partnered and particularly Wuhan, uh, where, you know, the uh, CCNU is uh, is now uh, offering our students a year of Chinese language training as part of the ICS HYI. But uh, one last word, basically, for those who are uh, who are looking for opportunities to learn Chinese, you know, this uh, CCNU in uh, Wuhan actually has some of the best facilities for learning the language. Uh, they are in fact a university which specializes in teaching Chinese language to foreign students. So they have really uh, made that entire methodology uh, very, very finely attuned to the needs of foreign students. So I would, uh, if you if you all would like to uh, know more about it, we can, um, you can write to the Institute and we can uh, tell you, you can apply there for the language, go there for your uh, language and then get on to research. So, so yes, there are, there are uh, institutions in China also that we should be thanking. There are HYI and there is of course, uh, the hope of the future that some of you saw the presenters, some of them are here and the others, uh, which we are all very, very happy about. Thank you all very much for uh, coming to this uh, event and uh, hopefully you will all be part of us uh, very soon. Thank you. Thank you.